wanted to share with you today is one of the greatest deeds and actions of the heart and that is التوكل على الله سبحانه وتعالى reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is a tawakkul? What does that mean? And how are we able to achieve properly a tawakkul, reliance upon Allah azza wa jal during our lives? Whether we're going to work, or whether we're at home, or uh, whether we are sick, in any circumstance of your circumstances, how is one able to achieve true tawakkul Reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his life. So let me begin first by saying that At-Tawakkul, reliance upon Allah azza wa jal, is wajib. It is an obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made At-Tawakkul or he made At-Tawakkul, reliance upon Allah, a condition of a proper iman or a condition of a person's iman and Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers must rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what Allah said, and that is the proof for why reliance upon Allah is an obligation. So, At-Tawakkul is the highest, highest level of At-Tawheed. It is the highest level of declaring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who rely upon him. Allah azza wa jal, he said, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-mutawakkileen. Indeed, Allah azza wa jal loves those who rely upon him. And those who rely upon Allah azza wa jal and achieve this in their daily lives, Allah has promised them that he will suffice them in all their affairs in their life and in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever relies upon Allah Azza wa Jal, whether male or female, what is Allah's promise? فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah Azza wa Jal would be enough for this person. Allah would suffice him. Allah Azza wa Jal will look after him, take care of his worldly needs, and he'll take care of his hereafter needs. When he arrives on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal will look after him. This is the reward and the virtue of having proper tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's define a tawakkul. What is a tawakkul and how can it be achieved? Al ulama rahimahumullah, they said that a tawakkul is an action of the heart in where the heart is relying upon Allah Azza wa Jal. والتوكل has two parts to it. Number one, التوكل is to take by the means. Taking by the means. And then you put your trust and you rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal, not upon the means. This is the definition of التوكل. Two parts. You take by the means and then you rely upon Allah not upon the means. Now, where is the dalil for this? Let me explain to you two ahadith that prove this to us. The hadith of Amr ibn Umayyah radiallahu anhu. He narrates, and the authentic hadith is authentic, more than one of our ulama authenticated the hadith. This sahabi said, a man came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this man asked the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about if this man wanted to do something. So this man wanted to take advice from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that which of the two matters he's about to do uh, is correct tawakkul upon Allah Azza wa Jal. So this man came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, should I tie my camel and then go to my work? Or should I just arrive at my work and get off the back of my camel and leave it where it is and go to my work and finish my business and then come back to my camel? فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him, اعقلها وتوكل. He said to him, no, tie the camel, tie your camel 
and then rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Go to your work. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith is teaching us the importance of taking by the means. So this person has a camel and he's worried if this camel was to get lost and go astray and he loses his camel. So what should he do? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, take by the means. Tie the camel. I'qilha, tie it. The ulama, rahimahumullah, they say that i'qilha here, either tie it to a pole or tie it to a tree, or it could mean tie its leg. So the camel, you know how it has a leg, uh, you take its leg and you tie the end of its foot, its foot to its thigh, so that yani, its leg is not standing, its foot is not firm onto the ground. These are two ways of how you tie a camel. So that's the means. Tie it. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَتَوَكَّلْ Then rely upon Allah azza wa jal. So you tie the camel, but don't rely upon the tying that it will protect the camel. لا. Rely upon Allah that he will protect the camel for you. This is اِعْقِلْهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ So it's very clear from this hadith in where we learn التَوَكُّلْ is two, two parts. You take by the means, and then you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not upon the means. And another beautiful hadith, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, لَوْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَرُوحُ بِطَانًا Allahu Akbar. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if you people truly were to rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal, if you were to rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal, حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ The way you have to, or the way you should, the proper way of having tawakkul in Allah, then the result would have been that Allah Azza wa Jal would have provided for you just like He provides for the birds. How does He provide for the birds? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said at the end of the hadith, تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَرُوحُ بِطَانًا that the bird, تغدو, it flies, it flies away from its nest, khimasan, hungry, it goes in the morning hungry, وَتَرُوحُ بِطَانَ And it comes back in the afternoon, بِطَانًا, full, it has eaten. The point in this hadith is to show us that التوكل, reliance, when your heart is relying upon Allah, you must also take by the means. Because the bird didn't just sit in the nest and relied upon Allah with its heart for Allah to feed it. Rather, the bird moved in the morning. It got up from its nest and it went and it was hungry. And it came back in the afternoon and it was satisfied. So this hadith is also proof that at tawakkul relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must be coupled with taking by the means. You take by the means. When ulama rahimahumullah, like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, مَنْ ظَنَّ أَنَّ التَّوَكُّلَ يُغْنِي عَنْ فِعْلِ الْأَسْبَابِ الْمَأْمُورِ بِهَا فَهُوَ ضَال The one who thinks and assumes that reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal is only by the heart and has nothing to do with the means then such a person is dal, such a person is misguided, Allahu Akbar. So now let's explain um, how a tawakkul is achieved in our daily life. I'll give you examples of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of people in the past and how their tawakkul was. If we look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find that, that he was Imam al-Mutawakkilin wa a'zam al-Mutawakkilin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an imam in at-tawakkul, in reliance upon Allah azza wa jal. We must follow his example whenever we want to achieve tawakkul in our life. Look at the case of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he did hijrah from Mecca to al Madina when he migrated from Mecca to al Madina, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't just say, I'm going to rely upon Allah with my heart 
And now I'm going to leave Mecca and go straight to Al-Madinah and I'm just going to walk, you know, and rely upon Allah. No. Rather, he took by the means and he relied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not upon the means. This is what I mean. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he left Mecca, he arranged for himself a camel. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had brought two camels, one for him, one for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he fed the camels. These are all means, preparations. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he traveled with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He took a companion with him as he undertook al-hijrah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, him and Abu Bakr, they hired a guide, a person that would guide them out of Mecca to al Madinah. His name was Abdullah ibn Uraiqir. Right? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the way, as he is going from Mecca to Medina, he hides in a cave known as Ghar Thawr. Ghar Thawr wasn't on the way to Medina. It wasn't on the way. It was, it, it was away from the, 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 the proper road of al Madina. It was off the path. It was off the road. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Abu Bakr, they prepared their food. These are all the means. Planning and preparation. Then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got onto his camel and they took off him and Abu Bakr going towards al Madina, And you know, they went and they hid in Ghar Thawr, in the cave of Thawr. Eventually, the mushrikun of Quraysh, the disbelievers, they caught up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they got to the cave. And they encircled the cave. Wa Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were inside the cave. Wa Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was worried. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he said to him, Ma baluka bithnayn, Allahu thalithu huma. He said to him, Abu Bakr, what do you assume? What do you think? What are your thoughts about two people? And the third one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying to him, what can befall, what can happen to two people? And Allah azza wa jal is the third one of them. Allahu Akbar. This is a tawakkul. You see this? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prepared everything. He prepared camel and food and hiding in the cave of, of Thor. He did all that. He's got his guide with him. This is all preparation. This is all means. But where was his heart? Where was his heart? It was relying upon Allah Azza wa Jal, not upon the means. Yani Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say to Abu Bakr, don't worry, don't worry, we're in a cave, we're hidden, you know? We, we, we won't be found. It's all right, it's dark in here, it's okay. He didn't say that. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not relying upon the means. He's reply, relying upon Allah Azza wa Jal. This is how a tawakkul is achieved. You take by the means. But then your heart is relying upon Allah, not upon the means. Look at the case of Hajar radiyallahu anha. Hajar, uh, of course, the famous story with her son Ismail and how she went thirsty and Ismail was crying. He's a baby. She wanted to find some water, some food for him. She didn't find. So she began to uh, do sa'i between As-Safa and Marwa. She is running between the mountain of As-Safa and the mountain of Al-Marwa, going up and down, up and down seven times. This is all from the means. This is all from the means. And she's relying upon Allah. Her heart is relying upon Allah. It wasn't relying upon the walking from As-Safa and Marwa seven times. No, she was relying upon Allah. And then that's when Zamzam came. And what is the proof for this? Because when Ibrahim alayhi salam left Hajar and Ismail in Mecca and went, she asked him, she said, Ya Ibrahim, did Allah command you to leave us here? He said to her, yes. She replied and said, Ivan len yudayya'an Allah. Len yudayya'an Allah. She said, if that's the case, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not fail us. He will not neglect us. So her heart is relying upon Allah. 
She knows Allah Azza wa Jal is going to look after her and bring her relief. But she didn't just sit there and wait for the water to come. She took by the means. She went up to As Safa, back to Al Marwa, back to As Safa seven times. This is the means. But she did not rely upon that. She is relying upon Allah Azza wa Jal to relieve her from her distress. And that's exactly what happened. Since she relied upon Allah, her gift was special and it was from Allah. And that was something that is impossible. But everything is possible upon Allah Azza wa Jal. The earth, the earth cracked open and Zamzam came out. And Zamzam was a gift for her first and foremost. And it is there up until the day of judgment for us to look at, for us to drink from and remember the proper tawakkul of Hajar radiyallahu anha. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this is what a tawakkul is. Take by the means, rely upon Allah, not upon the means. So let me give you, yani, al ulama rahimahumullah, they say, a tawakkul, al jawarihu ta'mal, that your limbs are supposed to be working. It's supposed to be working. And the heart is what relies upon Allah Azza wa Let's speak about a farmer. You see, I give you an example through a farmer. The farmer, he plows the earth, right? He digs the earth. He'll get the perfect seed. He'll spread the seed in the earth. He'll plant them. He waters them daily. These are all means. All of this is asbab means. And then after this, his heart relies upon Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah will nurture these plants and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will produce the fruit and the vegetables and the herbs and everything else on this land. Why? He relies upon Allah. He takes by the means and relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he does not rely upon the seed and upon the water. Because if you rely upon the seed and upon the water, and if you rely upon them, uh, sometimes the seed could sprout and grow. Other times it's a dead seed, nothing grows. But if you rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal, then it is Allah who makes this seed sprout into a plant. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses whether He wants to do this or not. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. Then this is a tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's speak about if you are sick, how do you achieve tawakkul upon Allah when you're sick? How would you achieve tawakkul? Listen to this very carefully. Uh, you will take the medicine. That is a sabab. You will look for the best medicine, for the best doctor, for the best surgeon. Do all that. Let's say, you know, when people are sick with cancer, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give them shifa and to give the Muslims around the world shifa. Let's say someone is ill with cancer. How does he achieve tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, proper reliance upon Allah azza wa jal? He will take the medicine. He will find and look for the best doctors and for the best surgeons. And he'll put a lot of money, no problems. This is all the means. Then, his heart will rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal to cure him and to heal him. And he will not rely upon the means. He or she will not rely upon the medicine and upon the doctor and upon the surgeon. These people are only means. The Panadol or the medicine is only a means. But the sick person will rely upon Allah because Allah is a Shafi. Allah is the healer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who cures. As in the hadith, la shifa. There is nothing that can cure anyone. Illa shifa'uk. Except your healing. Except your cure. This is why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, a man came to him and said to him, show me your back. Because this person was a doctor. And he knew that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had something in his back. And of course, this thing in his back was khatamun nubuwa. It was the seal of prophethood. It was like a pigeon's egg and there was hair on it. This was a sign that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final prophet of Allah. So this man came 
And he said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, show me your back. فَإِنِّي رَجُلٌ طَبِيبٌ I'm a doctor. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Allah al-Tabib, Allah is the healer. Allah is the healer. بَلْ أَنْتَ رفيق. You are only a friend. You are only a comforter. بَلْ أَنْتَ رَجُلٌ رَفِيقٌ طَبِيبُهَا الَّذِي خَلَقَهَا The true doctor, the true healer is the one who created this thing on my back. Is the one who created the sickness and the evil. فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he said to this man, you're only a friend, you're a comforter. You know, just like the surgeon and the doctor and the nurse. They're only comforters. They comfort you. They walk you through the uh, surgery and what is going to happen, you know, and they make it easier upon you. And the medicine brings you relief. But the true doctor and the one who's going to heal you, al-shafi, who Allah, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ If I was to fall ill, it is he who will cure me. In other words, take by the means, no problems. Find the best doctors and the best medicine, no problem. But do not rely upon this. You rely upon Allah that he will make the means work. And you know why it is very, very, very important to have proper tawakkul relying upon Allah, not upon the means. Because these means could work and sometimes they don't work, right? Sometimes the means work, sometimes they don't work. So if you relied upon the means and they didn't work, that's when you'll become upset. This is when you will become frustrated. This is when you will object to the qadr and to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ You know, if you're sick and you take medicine and you rely upon the medicine to cure you, and then let's say the medicine didn't work, you will lose your deen. You will lose your iman. You will doubt Allah azza wa jal because you relied upon the means. But if you took the medicine, and you did the surgery and whatever it is, and you relied upon Allah, not upon these means, then if these means did not work, and if they failed, you won't have an issue. Because you didn't rely on them to begin with. You relied upon Allah, a shafi And if they didn't work, that means Allah doesn't want them to work for you. Allahu Akbar, Allah has a better plan for you. Allahu Akbar. And this is how we achieve at tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is at tawakkul Never ever rely upon the means. The means, as I said to you, sometimes work, sometimes they don't work. Take an example of two sick people. Let's say two people are sick. One person, and both of them take the exact medicine. But someone, one of them is cured, one of them heals, and the other, his illness gets worse and he dies as a result. Can that be possible? Of course it is. Isn't it possible? Doesn't it happen? Sometimes, yani, uh, as I mentioned to you, the, uh, a patient with cancer, sometimes the patient takes chemo. Chemotherapy works. And other patients, they take chemotherapy and they die. Chemo doesn't work. So the means itself sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work. So you'd be a fool to rely upon the means. You will, this is why I say to you, if you rely upon the means and the means doesn't work, you will have problems with your iman. You will object to the qadr of Allah. You'll become angry and frustrated with Allah. But if you rely upon Allah, now you do not care whether the means work or not because you did not rely upon them to begin with. You relied upon Allah. Now, my brothers and sisters in Islam, understand this. Uh, why do we rely upon Allah? Why do we rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Understand this very carefully. Allah azza wa jal, he said in the Quran, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتْ Allahu Akbar. Allah azza wa jal, he said, and rely, this is a command, an order from Allah, rely upon Allah, the one who is all living, الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتْ and he does not die. He does not perish. This is why we rely upon Allah. 
because he's the all living. He's the source of all life. He's the source of all strength. So if you rely upon other than Allah, everything other than Allah will perish, will die, will end. So if you rely upon other than Allah, you risk it. That as soon as that thing perishes or gets destroyed and it will perish and destroy, خلاص, your case is finished. Whatever you are looking forward to is gone now. But if you rely upon Allah, the all living, the one who never dies, then you are truly relying upon something that is stable and your affairs will be done. And Allah Azza will look after you because you're relying upon someone who does not die, he's living. If you rely upon other than Allah, then we said everything other than Allah will perish and will be destroyed. If you relied upon other than Allah, then the matter that you relied upon other than Allah is a failed, ruined, destroyed matter. You will never achieve what you wanted to achieve. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, look at the case of the son of Nuh alayhi salam. When the big flood was happening, Allah Azza wa Jal was going to save now Nuh and the believers. His son, his name was Kan'an, mentioned in the books of Tafsir. His son uh, didn't want to accept, didn't want to believe. And his son looked at the mountains and he said, He said, I am going to seek refuge at the peak of the mountain. Because if I get to the mountain, to the top of the mountain, impossible. The water won't get there. And as a result, I will live. I will not drown. Allahu Akbar, the son of Nuh, he relied upon the means. He relied upon a mountain to save him. He did not rely upon Allah. As a result, Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ He was from among those who drowned and he was destroyed because he relied upon the means. Allahu Akbar. And he was a disbeliever. Subhanallah. For my brothers and sisters in Islam, very important that we take by the means, but then we rely upon Allah, not upon the means. You know, when you go out to your work to go and make a living, how do you achieve a tawakkul ala Allah, reliance upon Allah, when earning a living? How do you rely upon Allah and achieve it properly? Well, take by the means. Work. Work hard. You know, of course, while performing and observing your obligations and giving everyone their rights, your right, your family's rights, and so on. Work. Find work. Um, and, and, and do whatever is required, as long as it's halal. But do not rely upon your work. Do not rely upon your work. And do not rely upon your money and your check. These are means to a provision. Rely upon Allah. Rely, up, up, rely upon Allah. Your rizq, your provision is upon Allah. Not the means. The job, the money, all this is just means. You rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal. This is how you achieve tawakkul. That when you work, keep in your heart and in your mind. It is not the work that is feeding you. It is not the money that is feeding you. These are means. They come and they go. Sometimes they can work. Sometimes they don't work. Inama, I rely upon Allah that He provides for me and for my family. And whoever relies upon Allah Azza wa Jal, after he has taken the means, Allah is enough for him. Allah Azza wa Jal will satisfy him and he will look after his affairs and he'll give him more than what he expected. Allahu Akbar. With dua, my brothers and sisters in Islam is a means. Make dua, it's a means. But rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which you asked for. Subhanallah. Similarly, when you leave the house, when you leave your house and you want Allah to protect you, we all want Allah's protection day and night. We want Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from harm when we leave the house. We want Allah to protect us from the evil of mankind and the evil of the devils with shayateen. We want Allah to protect us from al-fitan, the temptations, the trials that are out there in society. 
So how do you achieve tawakkul in this? When you leave the house, say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Say it when you leave the house. Say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, and I put my trust and I rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa la hawl, wa la quwwa, illa billah, and there is no power, there is no ability whatsoever. Illa billah, except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to give permission. Then you go into your car and take by the means, put your seatbelt so that you don't get harmed. Put your seatbelt and drive safely, drive safely in the appropriate speed limit that is out on the roads. And look after yourself, take by the means, but rely upon Allah that He subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. Not the seatbelt. The seatbelt doesn't protect on its own. And adhering to the speed limit doesn't protect. These are means. You must take by them. The proper, the one who actually takes care of you and protects you is He subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal. For whoever says this dhikr, tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, the devils, they turn away from him. They say, how are we going to affect someone that has relied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala?